Hey, what's up everybody? 8-Bit Flashback here. Today I will be testing out a custom RetroPie build that's running on the Raspberry Pi 4 that was compiled together by Adam Levy. And I'll leave a link to his Facebook down below if you would like to talk to him about this build. And I will be testing out numerous different emulators today, including Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, Sega Saturn, Dreamcast, PlayStation, Nintendo 64, and more. So this build is running RetroPie inside the Raspbian operating system, and I am able to access it through the terminal by typing emulation station. When I asked Adam to summarize what he did to compile this, he stated, I installed RetroPie on a Linux buster. But obviously there's a lot more work involved than just that, but that is a summary. This is a 64 gigabyte build that has a bunch of emulators already set up with some working great and others not so much. Now I would not consider this a stable build because it does crash once in a while and it needs better optimization. But it's a great start and it gives us an awesome preview of what's to come on the Raspberry Pi 4 when the official RetroPie does get released. So let's go ahead and start it off with some PlayStation using the PCSX rearmed emulator. And it's running really nice. It's running pretty much full speed all the time and it runs nice and smooth. So PlayStation emulation on the Pi 4 looks like it's good to go. So let's go ahead and watch the gameplay here for just a few. Round two. Now let's check out some Nintendo Virtual Boy and we'll try out Space Invaders and we're going to be using the Beetle VB emulator. And the Pi 4 is more than capable of emulating the Virtual Boy, and I don't see any issues here. It seems to be playing just fine. Well, there might be one issue. The Virtual Boy just isn't that fun to play. Okay, let's try out some Super Nintendo. And we'll try World Heroes using the SNES 9X 2010 emulator. And it's playing smooth, the frames per second seems to be holding at 60 pretty much all the time. So I don't think there's any issues happening here. And I've never played this version of World Heroes before on the Super Nintendo. I've only played it on the Neo Geo. And I can tell you right now that the Neo Geo version is way better. Now it's time for Sega Genesis or Mega Drive and we'll try out Vector Man using the Pico Drive emulator. And it seems to be running really nice, although I am noticing some light screen tearing towards the top of the screen. Now this issue will probably get resolved when the official RetroPie does get released, but I thought I should point it out. And if you look in the bottom left corner, you can see the frames per second counter, and you can see that it's maintaining 60 frames per second all the time. Now let's try out Sega Saturn. And there was a few games on here for the Sega Saturn, but none of them were working, so I did add a few games myself. And we'll go ahead and start out with Gex. Now Saturn emulation is not doing good. Now I have tested this on a few other operating systems such as Laka, and the frames per second for Sega Saturn usually runs at about 20 to 30 frames per second, so it's not doing good. Now I do have the frame skip enabled, so it's gonna show a higher frame count, but trust me, the actual frames per second is gonna be about 20 to 30, making the games pretty much unplayable, and the audio is skipping like crazy. But even though the emulation for Sega Saturn at this point is horrible, I do think we'll see better optimization for Sega Saturn and some games in the future, less demanding games that are 2D games might become playable. But with more demanding games such as Sega Rally, I think we're a long ways off still. Sega Saturn emulators have come a long way in the last couple of years, but they still need a lot better optimization to perform better on less powerful single board computers such as the Raspberry Pi 4. Now let's try some Dreamcast, and there is a couple different emulators available on here. There is the Raycast emulator, which I could not get to work, and there's also the Flycast emulator, which is what I'm using now. And it's actually running at a fairly good speed, but as you can see here, there's all kinds of graphical errors happening, and all kinds of colors are messed up. Now if you look at the frames per second in the bottom left corner, it's showing it's only running at 30 frames per second, but I do not think that's accurate because the game seems to be playing smoother than what the frames per second indicates. So if I was to guess, 
I think it's running at about 50 frames per second and it should be running 60 frames per second full speed. But even though it's a graphical nightmare with what's happening right now with the Dreamcast emulation, and especially with this game, Marvel vs. Capcom, I'm still impressed with how good the speed is and the sound quality. And I think here in the near future with better optimization, we're going to see quite a few of these games become playable. Now it's time for some Neo Geo, and what better game than Metal Slug. And after testing a few different games for Neo Geo, everything seems to be good to go. I haven't noticed any speed drops, everything seems to be playing nice and smooth. Although I did notice a little bit of light screen tearing towards the top of the screen, but I think this will be easily resolved when the official RetroPie gets released. Now let's try out some PSP, and I'm going to be using the PPSS PP emulator. That sounds really weird to say, but anyway. I wasn't really having any luck with PSP games, they were all playing pretty slow. But I know the Pi 4 is capable of doing pretty decent PSP emulation, and I've seen other people having better luck with PSP games, so I think this is just an optimization issue, and we should expect to see some better performance with PSP here in the near future. Now let's try out some arcade games, and I wasn't having much luck with any games that were newer, like late 90s and later. I was only having good luck with games that were older, such as Darius. And what a great game this is. This is an awesome shooting game. Now for the games I could get to work which were older, they all seem to be working fine. I'm not really sure what's going on with any of the newer games, but the older games seem to be working well. Now let's try out some Panasonic 3DO using the 4DO emulator. And we'll try out Road Rash. And the game is actually playing okay. The speed's pretty decent, but the audio is all messed up and skipping all the time, making the game not very enjoyable to play. But I think with a little bit of tweaking to the 4DO emulator, we will start seeing a couple games being in a playable state for the 3DO on the Raspberry Pi 4. So I've played Road Rash on the Sega Saturn, but I've never played it on the 3DO. And I'm trying to remember what happens when you get pulled over. So it looks like I'm getting arrested. And now I'm going for a ride. That's pretty messed up. All I did was speed. Now let's test out some Nintendo 64, and we'll start out with Mortal Kombat 4 using the Mupin 64 Plus emulator. And out of all the emulation testing I've been doing today, I think I'm most impressed with the Nintendo 64 performance. I think that's where we're seeing the biggest jump with all the games and compatibility. Now there is some sound issues with a lot of these games, there's going to be some sound that cuts in and out, but as far as the frames per second goes, it seems to be running pretty smooth, and a lot of these games are running close to full speed. With a lot of Nintendo 64 games, the full speed was at 30 frames per second, but there is a few games here and there that run at 60 frames per second. And I did test out quite a few different N64 games, and most of the games I would say are in a playable state, but I did have a few games here and there that I would say are not playable. And one of the games I did try to test out was Goldeneye using this emulator, and I didn't have any luck. It didn't want to load. Okay, it is time for me to get out of here, but if you want to stick around, you can, because I will be showing off some more N64 emulation with a few different games. And if you like this video, if you could, hit that like button, and have yourself a great day, and I'll see you next time.